My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm an associate real estate broker in the state of Alaska, and my mission is to help you build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today, we're going to be talking about what's going on in Anchorage, which as you probably know by now, is by far the largest real estate market in all of Alaska. Before we get started though, do make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and let's go and jump into it, talking about what's going on in real estate over in Anchorage, and we'll see whether or not we have a big market collapse coming up. Now, the first thing that we want to look at when we're trying to figure out what's going on in the residential real estate market is what's going on with the number of properties that we have available on the market. In other words, the inventory. Now, right now, currently, well, for the previous month, what we see is that there was about 300 homes available on the market. Now, that's down quite a bit from the year before for the month of July, the month we have the most complete information for. This time last year, it was approximately 430, 440. So you can see there is a pretty precipitous drop from what we saw this time of year. Now, it's even worse when we go back and look at, well, let's just say like 2019, there was, man, there was nearly 900 properties available on the market. So you can see just by how much our inventory has really fallen. We'll talk about more about why that is and kind of what that does to the market in the summary. Now, the next thing we see is that the total number of properties that have actually sold went from about 280 this time last year to about 220 this year. So despite having the inventory get cut so drastically, the inventory, the number of properties that have actually sold during that time frame hasn't come down proportionally. So it's come down obviously, but hasn't come down by as much as what we saw with the inventory. More on that in the summary. Last but not least, we see the average sold price went from year to date 457,000 this time last year to about 477,000 this year. So that's about a 4.5% increase year to date for what we're seeing for the average sold price across the entire board here in Anchorage. Now keep in mind that does include everything from just the small little thousand square foot single family home all the way up to the big luxury property over on the hillside. So it does incorporate quite a bit, but what we're seeing is the average sold price has in fact been increasing across the board in Anchorage. And we'll talk about more why that is in the summary despite interest rates going up and how I know this is the question everyone wants to know why is the average sold price defying all odds and actually going up instead of being forced to come down with interest rates going up well we'll talk about why that is in the summary but let's talk about the condo market first now when we look at the condo market it's the same thing on the residential side the first thing i want to know is how much inventory do we have available Historically in Anchorage, at least for the past decade or so, we've had a, really a glut of inventory for condos, and that is not the case anymore. This time last year, there was approximately 127 condos available on the market, and now we're seeing there's about 86. So you see this huge drop in the inventory from the year before. And again, that gets even more dramatic when we look at the year before, because when we look at previous years, because in previous years, we're seeing the inventory being around like really like 450, upwards of five, 380, somewhere around there. So you can see the inventory at this point is about 20, 25% of what we usually see. The next thing we see is the number of condos that have actually sold went from about 122 this time last year to 107 this year. So again, seeing a little bit of a drop, not proportionate at all when we look at the number of overall properties that are available to begin with. Now the next thing we see is the average sold price, which not surprisingly following the same trim as the residential market went from 244,000 this time last year to 268,000 this year, which that is an approximately 10% increase for the average sold price for condos. Big reason that we're seeing this big push towards condos right at the moment and they're appreciating at a faster rate than the residential market is interest rates go up, everyone starts looking at more affordable housing options and condos look like a great solution and so everyone just kind of moves in that direction and we know basic economics where there's gonna be more demand and the supply is going down, the price is going to go up for that specific item, or in this case, housing option, which is condos. So that's really the, the big ongoing theory as to why we're seeing the average sold price for condos just appreciate at such a fast rate. Now let's go and take a break real quick here. This is usually the 
part of the market update where I tell you about my podcast, Alaskan Journey Podcast, which you should still go check out. But I want you to be aware that we have a monthly meetup for those of you who are uh, physically in Alaska. And these are really just, just really casual events that we'll put on. And it's really designed to kind of give you a, a community as you're moving up here and kind of getting familiar with the area. Information about those meetups and kind of the stuff that we're going to be doing is going to be in the, the Facebook group, which link for that is going to be down below. I believe it's Alaska Monthly Meetup, if I recall correctly off the top of my head. We just had our first one a little bit ago. It's just a hike in the Matsu Valley. And this month, uh, for the month of August, we're actually going to be doing a bonfire. So do make sure you go get into that group because that's primarily where we're going to be giving information uh, about the meetup. So don't miss out. Make sure you go take advantage of that. And let's go and finish today's market update. Now, last but not least, let's look at the multifamily market, which this time last year, we see there was actually 73 properties available on the market for multifamily. And this year, it's a 78. That's right. This is the only real estate asset class in all of Anchorage where we're actually seeing an increase in the inventory compared to the year before. And it's very, very minor. I can't emphasize that enough. We've kind of that's really the first time we've seen an increase of uh, more inventory, at least in, in Anchorage for the multifamily market for the entire year. And really looking historically, looking at the past couple of years, I mean, 78 is still not much at all. Usually we're going to see about 170, 180, 200, maybe like 225 around this time of year. So um, having 78 is still not particularly high, but it is a step in the right direction, even though it's it's a small step. Now, the next thing we want to know is obviously how many multifamily properties have actually sold. Well, this time of year, last year, we saw about 38 multifamily properties actually sell, record, go to somebody else. So that was 38, and now we're seeing 24. So seeing a bit of a dip in the number of properties that are actually selling for the multifamily. And I suspect the reason for this is interest rates do have a more direct impact on prices for multifamily because that is all investment. And when you have a, a mortgage that's shooting up so high, just with the interest rates going up, you may or may not have the rents to actually keep up with it. Now rents are going up just because that's a natural part of being in a time of inflation. And so you do kind of see the value for these multifamily properties going up and kind of keeping pace with the increase of the interest rate. It just depends how quickly that interest rate goes up. So that's that's one theory I have as to why we're seeing uh, kind of a pulling back for the enthusiasm for purchasing multifamily right at the moment. Because we actually saw a bit of a bonanza like the past couple of years. I think it was back in uh, 2020, actually, we saw like a double that number closed for the month of July and that pretty consistent really for the entire, entire year of 2020. It was a good year to be an investor just because the interest rates were so low. Last but not least, we see the average sold price for multifamily in Anchorage actually went from about 409 this time last year to about 4 90 this year. That's right. We're actually seeing about a 3.8% decrease for the average sold price for multifamilies in Anchorage. And kind of my theory as to why that is, is probably more to do with the interest rates going up. And just with that being so closely tied to investments more so than what you're going to find with, with other asset classes in real estate. That being said, though, it is still a pretty good market to be an investor in because this is a time of inflation and the rents do go up. And the trick really is just staying on top of those rent increases. I know that sounds heartless for those of you who are renting, but if you do not, the increased property taxes you are paying right now as a landlord will eat you alive if you are not keeping up with increasing the rents accordingly. So what does all this mean? Well, let's go ahead and get you the summary real quick here. If you are a seller, then still a pretty good time to be selling. There's not a whole lot of inventory out there. And the reason that is, is because a lot of uh, most people actually refinanced their home a couple years ago when interest rates were really low. Now, they are very, very hesitant to move anywhere unless they absolutely have to. Because why would you go sell your house with a 3% interest rate to go find another one at about a 6.5% or sometimes 7% interest rate, right? That's asinine. For that reason, a lot of people are just hanging on to their properties unless they absolutely have to sell. And so that's really why we're seeing that big shortage. So that's you know, kind of ironic because everyone was expecting interest rates to go up and that was going to create 
you know, this, this pressure that was going to push the housing prices down. And that is just not what we've seen. It's actually been the exact opposite. Looking at the condos, you know, for quite a while, condos have really kind of um, taken the brunt of the real estate market in the area. And it's, you know, it hasn't been like what it was back in the 80s when the entire market just crashed, but hasn't been a whole lot better than that. There's been a glut of inventory. And if you had a condo to sell, it would just take a while to sell. So it's good to see that condos are finally kind of in vogue. Uh, the big thing with those is just making sure still that you're priced correctly and make sure that you're in an association that does allow for the financing that's going to give you the maximum amount of buyers out there. Now, if you are a buyer in this market, don't lose hope. The fact that the interest rates are up means that you have less competition with other buyers. Okay, There is no way you just avoid all adversity all the time. That is just not how real estate works. Either you're going to jump in when the interest rates are really high or really low, at which point you're going to have a ton of competition. You're going to have to go ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars over asking price, offer all these concessions in order to just get yourself in there, or you're going to come in when interest rates are a little bit on the higher side and you're going to have way less competition. There's really no scenario where you just come in and it's just happy-go-lucky and everything's perfect. So the best advice I can give to you if you're a buyer, don't try to time the market. If you need to buy and it makes sense for you right now, jump in and take advantage of the appreciation going up still at the rate that it is. Because as soon as interest rates drop, okay, it is not likely that we're going to see interest rates again somewhere around like that two and a half, or I guess it'd have to be like 2% at this point to entice sellers to actually be willing to get off their houses and, and go explore other stuff. It's not likely it's going to get down that low, but what it will do is it'll bring out more, more buyers out of the woodwork. And so for that reason, I really suspect that right now is going to be the best time to be jumping in there if you're in a position to make that happen. If you're not, bide our time and make sure that when the time is correct, we're ready to jump. Now, if you're an investor, make sure the numbers balance out. That's about all I got for you. Thank you for watching this market update. If you have any questions, do feel free to reach out to me and we'll see you next time.